Today's lesson is going to be about um, the ontology of virtual reality and artificial intelligence. Ontology is basically the philosophical study of existence, or the study of reality, the study of being. Also, you know, when you start talking about ontology, you know what I'm saying, the study of things that exist, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a logical fallacy as far as you can't talk about something that does not exist. But the mere moment that you're able to talk about it, you know, the mere moment you're able to think about it, it exists. So it may not exist empirically or in the quote unquote real world, the physical world, you know, but it does exist as a concept, a rational, or abstract, or that is to say, in the mind, right? And so this is really the uh, manifestation of the ancient African concept associated with the deity Ptah, who is said to have created the universe by imagining it in his heart and speaking it with his tongue. So true ontology is not so much determining if something exists or not, but but rather, if the thing that you're talking about exists empirically or rationally, does it exist concretely or abstractly? Does it exist objectively or subjectively? You know, can I experience via evidence or do I have to experience in my mind via reason? And comprehending that point is key because that's the source of the majority of ontological debate. People don't understand what exists concretely and what exists abstractly. And the reason why people don't really understand the difference between an abstract reality and a concrete reality is because abstractions eventually do become concrete. You know, this is a human being exercising their abilities as creators, turning concepts and ideas into reality. The other reason for the confusion in a lot of these ontological debates is because there's a sick concept in the minds of human beings that they are somehow separate and apart from nature and the rest of the world. Human beings like to label their creations as artificial, man-made, as if it's somehow different from everything else that exists and is created in nature. As long as human beings see themselves as separate and apart from nature, human beings will continuously create things that are adverse to nature. Human beings see ants build an uh, ant, ant mound out of dirt, and that's somehow a natural creation, but the human being's house that's made out of bricks, and bricks is nothing but dirt, right? That's somehow artificial and unnatural. That's, that's really a flaw in reasoning that needs to be corrected in the minds of human beings. You know, the African way is that human beings, man is one with nature, and you are an extension of the creator. We study the philosophy of the Akan people, for example, in West Africa. You know, they, they express their concept in uh, the Hebrew Eye symbol, you know, it's a symbol for the totality of the universe. Natural and social creation in the pits, an eye, which represents the sun, then you see a crescent moon on the bottom, and then the size of it is a stool, which is the seat of royalty, you know, amongst the Akan people, right? And so it, it shows the unification of a natural and man-made creation. And those symbols are derived from the ancient Egyptian symbol, the eye of rock, the eye of horror. So now this brings us to the topic of this discussion, which is virtual reality. So even if you're absolutely abstract concept, the idea doesn't adhere to the laws of the reality that you exist in. You can bring it into reality and make it seem real, creating a virtual reality by speaking it into existence or talking about it. So the speaking or articulating of abstract ideas and concepts was in fact the first virtual reality. If I can sit back and tell you a story that may not have necessarily happened, right, I can tell you all kinds of fantastic things and while I'm articulating these points to you, right, while I'm describing these points to you, your mind is going there mentally and you're in another reality. That's, that was the original virtual reality. You know, and later when people started writing and started drawing, you know, then you could express uh, that virtual reality in a written form or in a pictorial form. Even your ancient mythology are forms of virtual reality insofar as they exist as creations, which are metaphors and similes used to symbolically simulate something. And so I use it to show how as technology progresses, the ability for humans to make and create their abstract ideas seem more and more real and more and more concrete, it gets better and better as technology progresses. You know, if I can draw a picture, you're more likely to accept the reality of a picture that I draw as opposed to me merely articulating it to. And then a black and white picture doesn't necessarily seem as real as a color picture. And a color picture, you know, it doesn't seem as real as an animated picture. And an animated picture still isn't as real as a hologram or a computer simulation. So when you create an environment, you're creating a virtual reality. And the laws and order that govern each of those realities are, in a sense, an artificial intelligence. Now, let's fast forward to the actual invention of the computer. So just as you can study your world and develop the rules and laws and formulas, right, and write them in a mathematical equation, you know, when you determine the formula that governs your reality and or cyber your world, because the word cyber just means to govern, then you can create an alternative reality by modifying those formulas. Well, your mind is also a part of your reality. So you can study the rules and laws and formulas that 
build in your mind, and once you once it's ascertained, you can modify it and create an alternative mind. So the computer was developed once the mathematical formulas of reason and the mechanics of the mind were completely comprehended, and the logic and reasoning of mathematics and the computer is written and developed on what is called a computer program. The word computer comes from the Latin word computare, which is composed of the prefix car, meaning with, and putare, meaning to pay, to count, to think, consider, to reflect upon, to reckon, to trim, prune, settle, to cut, open, strike, stamp, or separate. Now, it's clear from the phonetics and the definition of the word putare that is derived from the African Christian Indian name Patak, who was called the opener, who through creative speech spoke the world into existence. Now, the word program comes from the Latin prefix pro, meaning before, and gram, meaning writing, a word as in grammar. So when you say computer program, you're literally saying with the top before the word. Now, if you are familiar with what's called uh, the Memphite theology of creation, right, it says that the African Christian did name top spoke creation into existence after imagining it in his heart and speaking it with his tongue. Now, the tongue of Todd was associated with the African concept called who or creative utter, and the heart of Todd was associated with the concept called Sia or Sa, symbolic of insight and intelligence and wisdom, which is likened to the mind, Greek philosophy. So when you say something was with the top before the word, you're talking about the heart and mind, Sia, the mental reasoning process that enabled the automating and animating and programming of creation. So with the computer, you have both a created environment or a virtual reality and a created mind or artificial intelligence. The earliest artificial intelligence was created by programming minds by creating environments or creating reality. And so when you go and do the uh, etymology of the word robot, it comes out as being slave. And when you do the etymology of the word cybernetics, which they always associate with robotics, but cybernetics just means the art of governing or creating laws. So people can, can become programmed and become robot slaves by the laws of cybernetics or government. That's why you can observe people's mannerism, people's body language, people's speech pattern, and you can determine <laughs> what kind of program is running on their operating now, as a computer programmer who creates an artificial intelligence and creates a virtual reality, at that point, when they're confronted with another form of intelligence that is in contradiction with the artificial intelligence that they created, that contradictory intelligence is, in essence, the devil, right? That goes back to your whole biblical story. God created the Garden of Eden. He had certain rules and laws in the Garden of Eden. He was the programmer who created the intelligence that governed that virtual reality. And that mind in the serpent was the devil because his intelligence was in contradiction to and was overriding and going against the programming that was established by the program of that virtual reality. That's the whole thing behind the Willie Lynch letter. Whether it's real or fake, because, you know, it's, it's a debate on whether it's real or fake. Look, the whole premise behind the Willie Lynch letter was you said he can create a better slave or create a better robot, create an artificial intelligence by adhering to these rules, by adhering to this code, by adhering to this program. So any rules, any law of governing ordinances or cybernetics are by definition the chip to enable the programming is already in you. It's just abstract. It's not concrete. That programming is already running on your operating system. And meanwhile, while everybody was concerned about, you know, oh, they're going to put a chip in you, they weren't even looking at the other side of the equation of you putting yourself in, inside the chip. And what I mean by it is you voluntarily putting yourself inside the computer. When people are voluntarily putting their, their personal information, their profile in themselves. And they call it a profile. This is my profile. See, another characteristic of a virtual reality or simulation is that it eventually has to end, which makes any intelligent person have to wonder if maybe life is a virtual reality. That's the old sci-fi cyborg story. The individual dies and is resurrected and kept alive by way of technology, perhaps being able to live forever as long as they're able to keep their technology or application of knowledge working. And of course, you know, that, that's the whole death and resurrection story playing out in cyborg stories from our ancient African traditions, you know what I'm saying, of Osiris being killed by his brother Set and then being resurrected as horrible. Then they always depict the cyborg with one human eye and one robot eye exposed after that after he got into some type of conflict. Yeah, that comes from the ancient African story of Forest where he lost an eye in his battle against Took or Set. So we see the same story or the same program running itself on different operating systems, manifesting itself in different forms throughout all the ages. So now we're at a critical point in time. You have to decide. 
Are you a programmer or are you a robot? Do you use the computer or do you let the computer use you? Do you create your environment and control your reality or does your environment affect and control you? See, this African creation movement is about training computer programmers, those individuals who are able to use their mind so that we as African people can create our own reality that is conducive to our minds.